If you are a dyslexic person, you have dyslexia, I don't know how the proper way to say it, but before you get offended, uh, I have a child that uh, deals with dyslexia, has it, and brilliant, brilliant child, but a lot of hardship with it. So I'm coming at this topic with a lot of experience parenting someone that struggles with it, and it's very important. But here's the headline. People with dyslexia can bring unique strengths and advantages to the workplace. And yet, I don't think that they're allowed that opportunity. And I think that's got to change. Dyslexia is the most common learning disability in the world. And up to 15 to 20% of the population has a language-based learning disability that has very similar um, challenges as dyslexia. And again, if I could, if you are dyslexic, I would love for you to lean into this. If you are a parent of a child with dyslexia, would you please lean into this? Because I think this is enormously important. If you are a leader and you think you have someone on your team who's dyslexic, would you please lean into this? I think this is vital. Now, just a quick overview. Dyslexia can result in a lot of challenges with details, organization, time management. Reading and writing can be very challenging and, listen to me, very exhausting. Uh, effective communication can be an issue. Comprehension of complicated instructions. This can really flare up for someone with dyslexia. But if, as an employer, an educator, or a parent, we are unaware, and by the way, the education system is already beating the crap out of these folks. Our American education system is beating the crap out of dyslexic children to the point that they are feeling beaten up. They are exhausted. They are uh, isolated. They are made fun of. Listen, I've been there. I have held my child sobbing. In tears, they are feeling like they are completely stupid because of the one-size-fits-all classroom. Now, that is not my soapbox today, but I am telling you that if it is true in the education system, then it is true in the corporate workplace where what is seemingly a deficiency is a disguised proficiency. It's true. Let me explain. Talk to any expert. Go do your homework on this. Dyslexia provides a very unique frame of reference or point of view than non-dyslexic thinkers. As a matter of fact, while I'm doing this, Alex, pull up for me. Uh, famous, successful people that struggle with dyslexia. Because I know a few, but I, I, I want, if you could, well, in just a minute, I'm going to call on you. I want you to give me five or six. It's If you don't know this, it's going to blow your mind. All right, but here's what I want you to understand. Having dyslexia does not mean that you aren't intelligent. Having dyslexia, I mean, you can have the, you can have a, the most challenging type of dyslexia because there's all many, all, all different forms that challenge people in different ways. But you're right for this. You are average to above average intelligence, no matter how challenging it is. So let's let's blow that out of the water. Do you got the list? Because I want to I want to drive this point home. Go ahead, Alex. Give us some of the the most successful people that struggle with dyslexia, and you tell me if you think it's an intelligence issue. Go ahead. We've got Anderson Cooper. Anderson Cooper, yeah, Rob great great journalist. Robin Williams. Robin Williams. Kira Knightley. Kieran, both great actors. Albert Einstein. I hello. Pablo Picasso. Picasso. Whoopi Goldberg. Yeah. Uh, Richard Branson. Yeah. Richard Branson's one of my favorite. George Washington. I didn't know that about Washington, but Richard Branson blows me away because you're talking about a billionaire business guy who doesn't write emails, doesn't wear shoes. Uh, I read his book, uh, his biography, mm -hmm. and he talks a lot about dyslexia. So. Thank you for that, Alex. Here's my point. What's special about each one of those names that Alex just read? 
to a person, if you were to read their biographies or talk to people that knew them, worked with them, understood them, they would tell you that they have an unbelievable brilliance and a unique way of seeing the world. You heard those names, Albert Einstein, great actors and actresses, Robin Williams, one of the greatest comedic minds of all time. The dude saw the world differently. All right, let's, let's now bring this back to the workplace. If you understand that dyslexics have superpowers when, they, when you talk about visual thinking and seeing the big picture, they often can look at a complicated scenario and immediately simplify it. Gee, I wonder how that could be used in the workplace. They're great at coming up with original solutions. Great with unique ideas. Great to amazing problem-solving skills. Creative thinking. Think in the abstract. Super innovative. They're resilient. And is there a greater work quality than resilience? Another more popular word in today's world is grit in describing resilience. Why do they have so much grit? Well, back to what I said earlier that the education system has beaten the crap out of them. They have to show up every day at school and try to not look dumb, even though they're brilliant. Can you imagine going to school every day, feeling like you were less than, dumb, stupid, no intelligence, being made fun of? Phew. The grit. You got one way of doing everything. It's a one size fit all education system, and your your brain's coming in there going, uh, it's kind it's kind of like it, it, it's like basic math, and then the idiot bureaucrats came up with Common Core, and and we were all like the rest of us who do normal math were like, I don't get it. A dyslexic comes into that vanilla one size fits all industrial like assembly line education, and they they're like, I don't get it. And because they don't fit neatly in there, we go, well, there's something wrong with you. You get to ride the short bus. You go over in this class and you do this. And we're actually pushing the Albert Einsteins to isolation and frustration. My goodness gracious. We're pushing the Robin Williams to isolation and frustration. We're pushing the Kira Knightleys to frustration and isolation. We're pushing Richard Branson to isolation and frustration. And, and 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 then in the workplace, guess what? They got to get a job. And so they've been treated this way and they've been shoved through the system and then they get to the workplace and we treat them the same way. And 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 some leaders are are overlooking brilliant problem solvers, creative strategists, unique problem solvers. Now, let's get tactical for just a minute. Leaders. There's a stigma on this. So how do we figure it out? We've got to know our people. And we've got to have accommodations. Not only do we have to have accommodations on the things that are very difficult, it's something simple as making sure that they don't ever have to send in some public report, written report. There's a way around that. Come on, let's give them dignity. But, but hey, this is what I preach. Get them in the right seat on the bus, leaders, and watch them thrive. Watch them absolutely blossom and bring so much to the table that you never even knew they could bring. Man, let's harness this power. Listen, let me go back to this, leaders. 20% of the population has dyslexia. <laughs> this is a hidden force to do something amazing. Harness it. Lead it. Love them. Give them a shot. Some of them are just waiting, and they could literally change the future of your business. So, to my dyslexic friends, get your chin up, shoulders back. Ain't nothing wrong with you. 